good. I want to piggyback off what Adam just said. He started out by saying, how many of you would want to be a yellow page advertising salesman today? How many of you said me? Okay, in local search, Yellow Pages is still the number one used tool. Number one, by a wide margin, 72% to 47%. Which says to me that while we're all here to talk about how cool technology is, there's still room for lots and lots of growth. My title uh, on the program is called Thinking Bigger. Well, one of the ways you can think bigger is to stop thinking narrowly. And my problem with lots of these kinds of conferences is that they get so narrowly focused on a narrow margin of what you're supposed to do that you miss out on the opportunity to do exactly what Adam was talking about. It's a good message. Integrate. Figure out a way to take all of the things that you've done well and been successful out and pull them together in one tight package to work better for you. So today, Matt said, Jeff, what do you want to talk about? I said, I don't care. I'll talk about anything you want me to talk about. So he gave me my my title, and he said, the feedback is people want to know success stories. So I'm holding my iPhone in my hand today, not because I'm tweeting or going to be taking pictures from the stage, but because I'm quoting numbers from people that are not mine, and I don't want to get them wrong. So first up, whoops, excuse me, Heather Elias, using Facebook. Heather does something unique. The craze over the last year has been the 365 things to do in Facebook pages. Lots of people are talking. You've got to have a Facebook business page that's focused on your local market, right? You've heard that? That's how you do it? She does it completely differently. She markets her Facebook page as her name. That's how she does it. Why? That's how she's branded. That's who she wants to be known as. She also does something very, very simple. All she's doing is mimicking the mix of content that's on her blog, which drives 75 to 80% of all of her business. So 80-20, 80% of it is local content, 20% of it she's talking about real estate. She is not hiding the fact that she's a real estate agent. She's not trying to somehow secretly through some subconscious message in the 365 things to do, have people figure out that she's a real estate agent. She's a real estate agent. She's talking about real estate. And she's driving people away from Facebook. Her objective is not to get them to stay on Facebook. Her objective is to get them to her blog where she can convert. That's her Facebook strategy. Now, she's successful. How do I know she's successful? She lives in Luton County here in Virginia. Her husband also works with her, and she has four children. I don't think it's possible to support a family in Luton County, Virginia, with four children. Loudon, sorry. I'm from West Virginia. We don't know how to pronounce things very well. She, but the key to her success is not Facebook. And, and even the key to her success is not really blogging. Blogging is the vehicle. Do you know one of why, why she's successful? She's successful because she's ridiculously smart. She was a National Merit Scholar in high school. Full ride, University of Maryland. Journalism major. She knows how to write. And she knows how to write leads that take people from her Facebook page to her blog. Is everyone going to be successful with her strategy? No. You want to know why? You can't write as good as she does. <laughs> or as well, or whatever the correct grammatical <laughs> thing is to say in that particular instance. <laughs> Video. <clears throat> Brian Copeland was built for video. From day one in his real estate career, he started using video. I think it's verified. He was the first real estate agent in the country to have a listing video on YouTube. And in his first year, he started doing neighborhood videos. By his third year, he was the top 25 in his market area in Nashville, Tennessee, as a real estate agent. He credits the vast majority of his growth to video. And one of his key strategies, which I like a lot, 
was what he calls building a strong ambassadorship. And so instead of him going out and talking about the neighborhoods, what he does is he takes his clients and puts them on video and has them talk about the neighborhoods. And he's tracked every year since he started doing that, two million, more than two million dollars every year in business that are direct referrals from the clients who appear in those videos. You know, something psychologically happens to you when you commit to go onto a video for a real estate agent, talk about them and talk about your neighborhood. Chances are pretty good you're gonna make a referral. It's a brilliant strategy. 60% of the listing presentations he goes on say they've seen his YouTube videos without any traditional marketing leading them to it. So he almost never loses a listing presentation. But see, just using video is not going to make you successful. One of you might win that camera that was you know, being roamed around. You all groan when you go on video. Brian doesn't. Brian was built for video. How many of you have met Brian Copeland? Raise your hand. Okay. Dude was made for video. He loves the camera. The camera loves him. He's so comfortable on camera, it's ridiculous. He's got a personality that will not quit, and that shows through on video in ways that, frankly, I'm never going to show through on video as good as Brian is, and quite frankly, neither are you. Isn't this uplifting? <laughs> My point is this. We focus on tools. We focus on technology. It's not the technology. It's marrying the technology that works for your specific skill set. You want to think bigger? Start thinking smaller. Start thinking about who you are to your core, that thing that differentiates you from everyone else. Find the technology that marries to that. That's what's going to make you successful. It's not the technology. Every single thing that you've ever done that's made you successful in the past will make you successful again. Technology is a vehicle, that's it, it's not magical. It doesn't do things for you, unless you're using Happy Grasshopper, which will actually do everything for you, I've been told. <laughs> <laughs> using location, how many of you checked in on Foursquare here today? I know some of you are lying because there weren't that many people checked in in Foursquare. Uh, not the ones who raised your hand are lying. Of course, none of you are lying. <laughs> Location's one of these tricky ones. But when I think about location, using location technologies, Corcoran Group is who I think about, and Matthew Shadwell is who I think about. If you are not following at Corcoran Group on Twitter, you are missing out on an incredible opportunity to learn. He will gladly share every single bit of his location strategy. October of 2009, they launched their iPhone app. September of 2010, they launched their Android app. Today, each and every single day, 40,000 people use their apps. Their nearby function tells you what listings, what rentals, what open houses are happening right at that moment. And they marry that content with curated content from the Black Book, and they've also teamed up with Zayat. And I actually did go online last night to make sure I'm pronouncing that correctly. It rhymes with the cat, Zayat to marry it with what's, what's good around where you're at right now, what restaurants, what events, what shopping, what nightlife. They've committed themselves to a location strategy. They have 10,000 plus Foursquare followers. They put 1,500 plus tips on Foursquare, helpful tips with this mindset. We are here to help you navigate New York City. That's it. That's what they want to do. He said, we digitally own New York City on Foursquare. And if you've ever roamed around Manhattan, checking into places on Foursquare, you know he's correct, because his tips are gonna show up everywhere. So why is he successful with location, and most people don't even know what to do with it? First and foremost, location. This is not going to work in every city. If you're from Grafton, West Virginia, where I was born, using this strategy is akin to saying, all I need to win in um, Monopoly is Baltic Avenue. <laughs> right? <clears throat> New York is all about location. Everything's jam-packed, tight into little areas. Of course people are concerned. What can I get to right now? It's a walking city. 
His apps and his strategy works for New York City. And, and secondary to that, it's a part of their branding DNA. Everything they do, all of their media, every action they take is dedicated to forcing people to understand, we are here to help you navigate this city. They have a singular vision. We want people to see New York through our eyes. And everything they do is key to that. If you want to have a successful location strategy, you better commit to it. And you better understand how people are searching locally for information and implant your way into it. They do not care what they use to get to it. All they care about is, are people in our location using it? If they are, we're there and we're on it because that's what we do. Twitter had a hard time finding a success story on this one. Do you know how I found my success story? I tweeted. I'm a tweeter. I got one response. A few people retweeted it. A couple people didn't follow the instruction and they sent me information either via DM or they responded to the reply. One human being, one person responded and sent me the reason why they thought they were successful on Twitter. I'm going to put this away because I'm not referring to it. Jeremy's interesting. Because he's not a big, huge tweeter. He's not one of those people that's tweeting lots and lots of times a day. He does something different. Even though he can track three closings per year since 2008 directly to Twitter, and what that means for him is, I did not meet this person for the first time except through Twitter. Our first contact was on Twitter. But where he finds the value in Twitter is in listening and listening to learn. He sees it as the greatest real estate think tank he's ever had. He has the ability to send out a message or ask directly some of the best and brightest minds in real estate questions that help him serve his clients. It's a tool that allows him to do his job better. <clears throat> and so for him, it's, it's really not Twitter that's making him successful at Twitter. It's who he is. See, his other business is that he runs a waste management company. He is not afraid to get his hands dirty. He's not afraid to do the work. And in every single one of these social spaces, if you want to get the most out of it, again, not magical. They're not going to do it for you, again, unless it's Happy Grasshopper. I am not being paid for this endorsement, by the way. I just think it's the cutest name on earth, even though I don't think grasshoppers have facial muscles. Um, <laughs> He asks questions, and he believes that everything he's doing on Twitter is a live interview with a potential client. What he wants people to see when they're listening in is him working on behalf of his clients, asking questions, getting answers. He's not broadcasting his listings. He's not simply feeding his blog post to Twitter. He's having interactions around the things that are valuable to him and his clients. That's how he's being successful on Twitter. And in this case, I think every single one of you could be. But you have to change the way you see Twitter. You have to change the way you think about it. It's the greatest listening device that's ever been created. And if you're willing to commit yourself to a strategy of listening to learn, you can get great benefit of it. Does that make sense? Blogging. I agree with his t-shirt. I believe it's the best damn real estate blog on the planet. Last year, uh, in the NAR 2011 report, I believe this number is accurate, they said the average realtor in America got four leads per year from their website. Four per year. It's not my number, that's NAR's number. Four per year. From a website. Jay gets 500 to 600 a month. You know what that means? He gets four before lunch every <laughs> single day. Every single day. Now, he started his brokerage three years ago because he was getting so many leads from his blog that he and his wife just couldn't handle it anymore. And his goal was we're just going to bring a couple friends in, we'll start this brokerage. We've got too many leads to handle coming in from the blog. We'll give them the leads and we'll start a brokerage. Three years later, he has 31 agents. He used to have 32, but with a combination of Eric and I, we stole one of those agents away from him in Tucson. Um, they work for me now. 
So he's declined, but it's really not his fault. It's really not the blog's fault. I apologize for that. 90,000 unique visitors per month on average to his blog. 90,000. 1,800 blog posts. 80,000 backlinks. If Jay wants to rank number one in Google for anything, I believe he can do it. And I tested this two weeks ago when I was in Phoenix, Arizona. My sister um, is a biker chick. She's very proud of that. I'm actually kind of proud of it too. She's kind of cool. I like hanging out with her because she makes me feel cool. And I'm not. Um, and we're at this biker bar in Scottsdale, Arizona. And the owner of the biker bar, my sister does most of the marketing for the bar. The owner of the biker bar was sitting there. He was lamenting the fact that what he really wants to be ranked for on Google is the best bar in Scottsdale. Well, I had invited Jay to come join us for some drinks, and Jay was sitting there. And I said, you know what? I think if Jay writes a single blog post using the keywords, the best blog in Scottsdale, his blog is so good, he will rank number one in Google for that term within a matter of days. Jay did that that next night, put up a couple photos. If you go, I believe it's still there. If you go Google the best blog in Scottsdale, the dirty, the best bar in Scottsdale, the dirty dog will show up in Jay's post. Do you know why he's successful at blogging? There's three reasons. One, he works his butt off. It's what he does. <clears throat> Blogging is not some magic pill. He works his butt off. He doesn't even sell houses anymore. I think one of his next blogs right, he's gonna write coming up is, this will be the last buyer I ever work with. Because he's just writing and shipping everything off. He uses his social capital very well to help promote the things that he finds are important. And the other thing that he does that makes him successful, he is not afraid to have an opinion on anything and they're telling me to get the hell off the stage. You want to be successful in blogging? You better work your butt off. And if you're not disciplined enough to do it consistently, to drive the kind of traffic Jay's doing, you will not be successful at blogging either. But you know what? You don't necessarily have to. I meet agents every single day all across the country who don't blog, aren't on Facebook, aren't on Twitter, and they are kicking the butts of every single new age agent out there who's using social media only to try and grow. Jay works because he works his butt off. You want to be successful in any of these tools that I just talked about? You want to have the kind of success they're having? You have to find your unique place. You have to do it consistently. You have to commit to it with all your heart, have a unique vision for it. Then you'll be successful, and only then. Technology won't do it for you. <laughs>